there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's video, I'd like to show you my favorite accessories for the DJI Mavic 3, because I get a ton of questions from folks asking me, what about accessories? What do you like to use, Rick? What works best for this? What works best for that? So I thought I'd sit down and talk about all the accessories that I bring with me pretty much every time I head out to fly, because every time a new drone is released, all the accessory companies out there spin up their factories and start producing things that they think you're going to want. And sometimes they work out just great. You'll order a product, put it on your drone, and you'll love it. But other times, it looks great in a website, you'll order it, it shows up, you're all excited, you open the box, it doesn't quite fit right, or maybe you use it a couple of times and realize, ah, I didn't really need that accessory, and it ends up in a drawer someplace, and you've spent money you don't have to spend. So we like to take a lot of time and test a ton of accessories for any new drone that's being released. We work with a lot of the accessory companies, so we get products early. Sometimes they work really well, sometimes we tell the companies to change a few things, and then they work even better. And other times, we can't find an accessory that solves the problem, so we'll sit down with the Drone Valley team and actually design one of our own. And I've got a couple of those to show you today. But in essence, what I've got in front of me are accessories that I think really add value. They make the drone a little safer when you're flying, maybe make it a little easier to fly, or get out the door a little more quickly in the morning. So I've got 10 of them here, and I'm going to go through them pretty quickly because some of these I've already reviewed in individual uh, reviews already. So if you want to check those out, they're on the channel. But I wanted to talk about these because I think I'm going to hit on everything that you may be curious about as far as accessories for the Mavic 3. And I'll start with the controllers. Now, this is the Generation 2 controller from DJI. They're using it on all their new drones. Drones. So the Mini 2 uses it, the uh, Air 2, Air 2S, the new Mavic 3, and it's a beautiful controller. The challenge with it, just like the Gen 1 controller, is that you can't really put a big tablet on here. It's, it's too small. So with this extending, it only goes out far enough to actually hold a really large phone. So if you've got a large phone, it'll work perfectly, but if you want to mount any kind of tablet on there, you're out of luck. And honestly, most of us want to use the tablet with our controller because we like that bigger screen. So the first thing we did was sit down and test all the tablet adapters out there. And there's a lot of contraptions on the market that snap around the bottom of this thing, some bolt onto it. I don't really want an accessory that I've got to spend 15 minutes installing. I want something that's quick and easy to use and folds up really nice and neat and put it back in my kit. So the first one we came up with was this Drone Valley product right here. It's an aluminum tablet extender that is designed specifically for tablets that are about the size of an iPad mini 4 or 5. And that's what I use most of the time when I'm flying. I'll take my iPad mini out and that's the perfect screen size for me. Now I know a lot of folks out there like to use those giant tablets, but but I'm telling you, over time, you're going to realize that big tablet is top heavy and it's going to be hard to hold it. So eventually you'll probably settle in something like this. But I like this one because we designed it to be incredibly easy to use. You basically spin this little thing on the back, put it between those two little bars right there and tighten it up. And that's all there is to it. You're ready to go. You just take your tablet, slide it in there. And again, it's the perfect size. It's aluminum. It's not going to wear on you. It's going to hang on forever. It's got a nice little Drone Valley logo on the top of it. And it holds that iPad mini great. And on the, on the site, there's specifications on how wide a tablet you can hold. But if you've got a bigger tablet than this, this won't work for you. But again, if it's a small tablet, it's a perfect solution. But if you have a bigger tablet, We've got this tablet extender, which I think is incredibly clever. It's from one of our accessory partners, and we kind of helped them design this. What it does essentially is clamp on the top of the antenna, and it actually squeezes on the top of the antenna to hold it right there at the top. And you're probably thinking, well, that's never going to hold. I've had this thing on there for four months. It's not going anywhere. And you can actually mount two different styles of tablets. If you've got a really big one, you can mount it there. If it's a smaller one, you can flip these guys up and mount it there. So you could actually use it with a smaller tablet like that, but I still like the aluminum one better. The nice part about this one is it folds down and can stay on your controller. You never have to take it off. So you can put this back in your bag. Next time you're ready to fly, just spin it out and stand it up. Now I've got a larger tablet here that I use on occasion. It's an Android tablet. And again, the same thing applies. It fits in the top and it holds it really well. That's not going anywhere. Now your question might be around the triple tech tablets. Those are really thick tablets. This will work okay with the triple tech. This one is a little bit sketchy with the triple tech, so I wouldn't use it there. We are working on a new mount that will work perfectly with the triple tech with these controllers and with the new uh, Evo products as well. So stay tuned for that. But right now this will hold bigger tablets. That'll hold smaller tablets and you're good to go. Now, next thing I want to talk about is lanyard for your uh, controller, because if you're taking your controllers out in the field, Believe me when I tell you, there's going to be times where you need to use your hands, and the last thing you want to do is take your controller and put it down on the ground because it's going to get dirt in it, it's going to get wet, it's going to get ruined. So we came out with a lanyard clip that's really easy to use. It consists of this piece, which basically slips over the top of your controller right there, and then you get a lanyard that comes with it as well. And you can use any lanyard you want, but the lanyard clips right on here in this hook. And then the nice part about this is you can put it around your neck like this, 
And if you're out in the field and you're flying intensely like this and you're watching your drone go all over the place and you have to do something like get a drink of water, you can let this drop. Don't let it drop that way because the joysticks will get hit. But let it sit like that. Use your water, drink your water, and then you can pick it right back up and start flying again. And this is adjustable. So if you've got really long arms, I've got short arms like an alligator, but if you've got really long arms, you can have it far away from your head and it works really well. And when you're done, just pop it off, throw it back in your bag and you're good to go. So that doesn't stay on your bag. All right, as far as the drone goes, we thought a lot about the drone. Now, one of my concerns about drones that fold, any drone that folds, going way back to the days of the Mavic Pro, was that they're just too darn close to the ground. And, and that's sort of a catch-22, because they had to build them small to be foldable. But if you look at where that camera is, I mean, that thing is really, really close to the ground. And if you set this thing down in soft ground or grass, that camera's going to hit the grass. It's going to go through its power on self-test routine. It's going to swing all over the place. It's going to pick up debris. And even if you're careful and you land it in a parking lot, the downwash from the props is going to kick up dust and debris and tinfoil and everything else that's going to get up in that sensitive mechanism, not to mention the fact that it's going to mess up these sensors. It's going to get gunk all over the sensors. So we were looking for a, um, a landing kit that would give us a little bit of extra height. The challenge with the Mavic 3, as opposed to some of the smaller ones that we have landing kits for, and by the way, we have accessories for all the drones out there, but the problem with the Mavic 3 is it's big and it's heavy. So putting landing gears on the feet didn't make a lot of sense for me because the torque involved with that weight, raising it up is gonna add more torque to those legs. So we were looking for something this could sit on and actually support it from the base. And that's exactly what I have here. Now it looks a little large, it's really easy to install. It basically just clips around the front like that then you snap it into the two vents in the back and it's not gonna cause any problems with ventilation. Don't worry about that, but it's installed. Now, if you have a big enough kit, you can leave it on there, but you can also take it off when you're done flying. And the other thing I like is these four feet are adjustable. So when you snap them out, they click into the outmost position. And when you click it out that far, look how much more height you've got. Four feet that are incredibly stable. They're actually out almost like spiders or crabs where they're out at a distance. So they're gonna really give you plenty of support. You can land this in very uneven ground. You can land it on rocks. And that extra space that you've got there just protects your cam camera and gimbal up front because those things are so sensitive. And that's the one thing that if it breaks, it's gonna cost you a fortune to get it fixed. So that's the landing gear kit. I use this every time I'm out there flying. And I know a lot of people are gonna go, Rick, I don't land my drones. I hand launch and I hand catch. Well, good for you. That's great. If you can catch it in your hand, you're good to go. But me, as a pilot, I kind of view taking off and landing as the two most basic things you've got to learn to fly a drone. And I, and I love the fact that I can take off, fly for a while, come back and land right on the mat. That's a big, exciting thing for me because that gives me you know control over the drone and I know that I got my pilot skills like top notch there. So I liked landing on the mat. So this fixes that problem for me and you're good to go. When you're done for the day, you can fold these back in just like I showed you before to unfold them. And again, just unclip these from the two vents in the back. This thing pops off the front, back in the bag it goes. Oh, well, another thing I didn't mention was the landing mat. I talk about this every time I talk about accessories. A landing mat is probably the first thing you should buy for your drone. Forget all this other stuff. If you're gonna buy one thing for your drone, get a landing mat. And again, if you're, land, if you're hand catching and hand launching, you're gonna say, I never use a landing mat. A landing mat is still something that's good to have with you. It's the basic accessory any pilot should have because this gives you a place to take off and land that you know is clean, it's dry, and even if you're not gonna land, having this on the ground gives you a nice dry place to put all your stuff down because if you don't have a lanyard, you're gonna set your controller down, having a landing pad is a nice dry place to put it down. So a landing pad like this is, is really important, I think, for any pilot. The reason I like this one so much is it's got this steel ring in the outside of it, and it's a bit of a, a bit of a magic trick. When you open it up, it wants to spring open, and it's gonna spring out to full, you know, full width over there. But the thing about that ring in there it's gonna keep it nice and taut. Whereas a lot of the other landing pads we tested were cloth, and if a wind came along, it would fold up, or if you've got the ones that fold up, they're not quite stable, it'll be goofy on the ground. This one, when it springs out, it's gonna stay nice and taut, gives you a nice place to take off and land from. So make sure you get a landing pad. If you get nothing out of this clip, buy yourself a landing pad. Whether you get it from us or you get it from somebody else, basic equipment. All right, so enough about that. Now the drone. So a couple of things we've had for other drones that took us a little bit longer to find for this particular drone, and I think these are critical accessories that I like to use in the field. Now, the first one is the gimbal lock. Now, you can use the gimbal lock that came with it. I know a lot of people really made fun of this thing when it first came out, and they're looking at it going, oh, man, I don't know how the, what the heck's with this thing. But I think DJI did a good job with this. It, it does a great job of protecting the camera, holds it in place. It also locks down the propellers when you're traveling. So if you're okay with this, stay with it. I'm not saying you have to replace it. But for me, I find myself going between locations in the field. So I'll fly here, I'll drive an hour to another place, and I don't put the drone away. I want it on the front seat with me, so I've got to protect that camera. So we came out with this gimbal lock right here, which is incredibly easy to use. It basically just slides over the top of the camera. Let me put it over like this. 
slide it over. Oh, I got it upside down. You gotta make sure you get it on right, Rick, when you're demonstrating the product and it snaps right out just like that. It locks in two places. There are two small pins down here that drop into those holes and there's a clip up top. And that protects your camera. So if you're gonna travel between locations, you can throw this on your front seat and not have to worry about getting any junk in your camera or having to bang around. And again, you can use that other thing if you want, but putting that harness on is a big deal. And okay, when I'm putting it away for the night, I'll put the harness on it. But normally I'm snapping this thing on and I'm good to go. And to take it off, you basically just lift up here, you lift up on the bottom and this thing pops off and you're good to go. The only other thing I would, I would uh, recommend for the drone, I talked about the landing, I talked about the gimbal guard, is what I'll call a sun shield because one of the challenges with the camera out front like that is when you're flying like this, if there's any sunshine around you, it can wash across that screen and really wash out your image, especially it's off to the side. You make a turn, all of a sudden you get the sun across the front of the screen. So we came out with this unit, which is basically a product that allows you to block the sun from either side. It acts like a baseball, sort of a baseball hat when you have that on and the sun's above you, you're not squinting so much because it gives you a little bit of shade. This snaps on the front of the unit as well and will actually protect that sun from washing in from either side. A really easy piece to use. I carry that in the kit where that comes in really handy for me is uh, in the end of the day or the beginning of the day. So I'm out in the morning when the sun is just coming up, it's sun, sunrise and I'm out there in the field. Having that on there with the sun low in the sky like that just gives me a lot more flexibility of where I'm going. And it's wide enough where it's not going to interfere with the camera moving around or self-testing or any of that stuff. It doesn't really give you blind spots because as you turn, the camera is going to compensate for it. But I think it's a great little product and it's not expensive, which is kind of nice. So throw that in your kit. I promise you, it's not something you're going to use every time you fly, but there are going to be times in the beginning of the day or the end of the day where that sun is just going to drive you nuts because any shot you want it seems like the sun's in the way now of course you can use nd filters to help knock down some of that glare but i like having that with me it's a quick easy thing to snap on the front of the drone and just start flying all right so let me talk about the batteries too because the other thing i'm concerned about is the lipo batteries those are really sensitive chemistry wise they're they've got to be protected they're very expensive as far as accessories go so protecting them and charging them are two things we focused on quite a bit <laughs> At a bare minimum, I carry a lipo bag with me for my batteries. Now, again, if you're throwing them in a case, you're probably okay, unless you've got one of those really inexpensive kind of pluck cases that you can get from a lot of vendors online for $19.95, where you kind of pull out the foam to create the shape you want and drop the drone in it. The challenge with those, and I, I always talk about this on the channel, don't use a case like that with a drone like this because that foam, because it's so easy to pull it out, eventually breaks down and becomes these tiny little particles that float all over the inside of the case. They're going to get on your camera. They're going to get on the sensors. They're going to get into the ventilation. So don't use that case. But if you have a higher quality case, maybe you're using a Pelican or somebody else's, you're probably okay. But I like having a battery bag because I like my batteries to be protected in my car. I may have the drone in the front seat. I've got batteries out. The LiPo bag takes care of that. And these are available in a couple different sizes. This is a double uh, battery bag. You can throw two batteries in there. There's a triple version. There's a single version. And again, all of these we have available on the website because anytime we test the product and I like it a lot, people say to me, where can I get that? Well, now you can get it from the website. So we've got it offered there. Another thing you might want to consider are battery guards. These are little rubber pieces that fit on the end of your battery. And if you're not going to use the LiPo bags right away, these are absolutely recommended. And these become really important if you're going to travel on a plane. So if you're going to spend time on an airplane heading out of the country, uh, when you go through TSA, believe me when I tell you, they're going to pull your bag apart typically, and they're going to say to you, what are you doing to protect the batteries from short circuits? Well, I got these battery guards on. They're inexpensive. Pop them on. There's no more questions. It's done. And then if you slide it inside the LiPo bag, you can say, end. I took the extra step to take my LiPo battery and protect it in a fire retardant bag. What other questions do you have? You're going to zip right through security. So these are nice. They're inexpensive. I use these there. I'll put it on, slide it in the bag, and then I know I'm double protected. All right, as far as charging the drone goes, now DJI gives you a really nice charger. You've got the standard wall chargers you can plug it in. They've got a car charger as well, but I don't know. I mean, it seems to me to be a little bit pricey for the car charger. So we looked at ways to charge the drone. Now, this is one of the first drones that DJI's released that easily charges through USB-C. Now, I know the smaller drones do, but their bigger drones always had proprietary chargers like the Air, the Air 2S, the Mavic 3, uh, Mavic 2, all the proprietary chargers. This one can charge through USB-C. BC. So we set about coming out first with a car charger that would allow me to charge those batteries, not just one battery, but a lot of batteries. So we developed this car charger and I've talked about it on the channel before. It's a 95 watt car charger. Think about that. Most car chargers in the market, if you get 30 watts out of them, you're lucky. To charge these batteries, you need a minimum of 65 watts. This has a USB-C connection on it, which will deliver 65 watts of PD charging power to charge your batteries. And where that works really well, and I use this all the time in the field, is when you have the hub, if you bought the Flymore package, you can pop three batteries in there, 
plug this into your cigarette lighter in the car, run a USB-C cable to that, and charge your batteries while you're driving. There aren't too many chargers on the market that actually do that. So we offer this car charger as a kit. You can buy just the car charger if you have plenty of cables, but if you need the kit, you get this, this beautiful little Drone Valley bag, then you also get the USB-C cable. You need a heavy-duty USB-C cable. This is USB-C to USB-C. That comes as part of the kit. We also include these adapters for the end of the cable because maybe you'll want to use that car charger to charge your iPhone or your Apple product or your uh, Android product or a tablet. And you can snap these on the end and turn it into a micro USB or even an Apple connection. So you can charge everything you pretty much own. And again, you can get just the car charger or you can get the kit. I like the kit because everything fits in one bag and you're good to go. The other thing I wanted to talk about for charging, and this is the last thing I'll talk about, is a hydro cable. If you have the standard charger, we came out with this hydro cable a couple years ago. Incredibly popular product on the channel. It's USB-A in this end, which plugs into any charger you own. So if you have the USB charge, or I should say the charging brick from DJI, it has a USB-A connection on it. Normally you can only charge one device at a time. You can plug this into the charging brick and then all three of these USB-Cs come live. So you can actually use all three of them at the same time. And with the Hydro cable, we also include them same set of connectors. So it's got an Apple connector or a micro USB connector. So you can essentially charge anything you want from this, from that brick on the uh, DJI product. You can also use this with the car charger. So you can plug it into that, that external uh, USB-A connection on there and charge three things in your car. So when I'm driving between locations, I typically have this plugged into this, and I'm charging that, really fast charging that, which I know people are going to say, it takes a couple hours to charge it. I get that, but I'm driving sometimes an hour between locations, so I can get half a battery charged by the time I get to the next location, so that's pretty good for me. It keeps me up in the air a little longer. I use the Hydra charging cable in the same uh, cigarette lighter to charge my phone and my controller at the same time. So I've got batteries charging, my phone or my tablet, and the controller charging at the same time, all from one charger in my car, so pretty cool. That's pretty much all I had for today. I know I went on a little long and I went through it pretty quickly. I didn't want to bore you. I'll probably put a key down the bottom so you can see exactly what I was talking about when in the clip. But for me, these are accessories that I use. All the guys here at Drone Valley use them. The team uses them. We have women flying as well, so the women use them too. Um, I don't want to sound sexist. So all of us use them. They're great products. And we just have a lot of fun out in the field. And again, when we find something that isn't working quite right, We'll try and find an accessory to help us with that. And if we can't find one, we'll design it. And that's kind of what we like to do. So hopefully you found this clip helpful. If you have any questions about anything I've covered today, drop those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. As I mentioned, all of these products are available on our website. We love the support you guys have shown us on that website. We're here to help you. I can stand behind everything we sell. If you have any questions or problems down the road, we'll be here to take care of you. So it's not like you're buying it from some website plump someplace and then good luck trying to get a hold of them if it didn't work out. We'll be here. We've been here. We'll be here in the future. So thanks again for watching. I've got a lot more clips coming. I've been so busy testing stuff. You're going to love some of the things we're putting up. But until next time, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.